tonight, I want to ask one or two people to tell me why they are interested in this movement we are and the reason why we are here tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, the first person I want to bring up here to tell us that what motivates them to support this motion. Join your hands together as I welcome Mr. Dimeji Oladapo. Please give me a round of applause. Good evening. Good evening. So, um, you know, uh, I'm not that good in uh, standing in front of uh, uh, people. Uh, but the thing is, uh, they call me, but I have no choice but to answer. So, uh, first of all, uh, when this movement started, uh, I was talking to Ohio about what we can, can we do as a group to uh, improve uh, life in Nigeria. Then they said, oh, uh, you know what? There's a guy running for the, uh, that want to run for the office. I said, oh, I said, oh, sure. I said, oh, sure. I said, Sahara reporter. That the guy that submitted uh, the Sahara reporter. I said, yeah, I know about Sahara reporter, but I don't know who is sure. So, and uh, we started, we did the town hall uh, meeting. So, but the thing is this, I see a uh, little guy for, with the lion's heart. You know, because Nigeria, everybody believes that there's nothing you can do because of all this uh, cabal, you know. But for some reason, uh, the next president of Nigeria, you know, said no. I, I can find these people. It's just like a story of David, you know, and Goliath. I said, look, I can find them. I know I have what it takes. So but the thing is this, I'm not here to, uh, you know, give one long speech, but all I want to say is this. Even though we live here in the United States, but there's something we can do, every one of us, which is donate to this movement. Number two, pick up food and enlighten uh, uh, our people at home. Let them know that, look, you cannot continue in this, uh, we are living in this condition because our land is going to make and money and only a few people, you know, see the, you know, controlling uh, 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 180 million, of, you know, of people. So, but now, I just want to say thank you for coming, but at the same time, you have to dip your hand into your pocket and then contribute. Because without money, it's just like a gospel. If you don't have money, you cannot win so. So but if you don't give, there's not, you can only do a little. Because when you go back to Nigeria, you have to travel everywhere. You know? And this going to go back. You know those long buses, the Ekele Chuku buses, you know? Those buses? He has to rent about 10 of those buses traveling around because he need that so that as when he, whenever he enter a, a city, they will, they will see, take it back, action. So, please, I just want to tell everyone that, remember what Kennedy, uh, what Kennedy said that, don't think about what your government can do for you, but what can you do for your government? Now, for your country. But now, what we can do is this, by donating to this world, you know, to this movement, that's the only way we can take it back. Take it back! Action! Thank you. Let's put your hands together for him. I said, put your hands together for him. All right, ladies and gentlemen, without wasting much of our time, we'll be calling on the next person now. We'll be introducing our future president. Ladies and gentlemen, if your hands are not busy, can you put your hands together for Mr. Okokwa Iwendo? Good evening, Nigeria. There is my voice being sound. Because this is a big occasion, so I'm not going to take your time. I just want us to know that we are part of an history. As about to unfold. This is the best time to be in Nigeria. And with all, let me just start by saying, uh, all protocols you know, of South Africa, please, because it's a very official occasion. 
in Chicago, like um, the astronomer said today, it's a very key part in this journey we are taking. Nigerian statements politically, in, I didn't know that until you made that statement today, he unfolded out of Chicago. So you being here today, you are about to make the real statement that will turn Nigeria into what everybody's dream is. So without supporting any further, please, with all pleasure, regards, and love, I want to take the pleasure to introduce one of the most profound Nigerians. I mean, I've been in this system for a long time. I haven't seen anybody who kind of had this brother has. So please help me stand up and give a warm welcome, Chicago welcome for Omoyele Shore. Of a lot of Nigerians. 
When we were um, taking the national anthem here today, I almost took a meal, you know, because there is a very interesting part of the, the second stanza of the national anthem, which says, guide our leaders right and help our youths the truth to know. Wow. No. And you are wondering, why is it that the youths have to be, you know, have to know the, the truth to know? It is because there is nothing in Nigeria that is for the youth. That is why when you probably was growing up, or when we were growing up in Nigeria, you are always told that they are the leaders of tomorrow. When I was told that particular story, or uh, that aphorism, I went home thinking that when I came back to school the next day, I would have become a leader of Nigeria. Till today, I have not become a leader. Because it is, you know, tomorrow that is perpetually postponed leadership opportunity for a lot of us. Uh, but there is a part of the, uh, the national anthem as well that says Nigeria for me. And I think Nigeria is calling on all of us present here today. And those other Nigerians who are not particularly here with us, they are calling on you to obey a revolutionary call to help deliver Nigeria from the hands of its very, very vicious, wicked, and uh, capricious uh, political class. These people have no interest of the Nigerian state at, uh, at heart. They have no intention of uh, developing Nigeria. They also have no intention of letting Nigeria develop itself. They have no intention of letting anybody with any progressive idea even come near Nigeria. That is the junction where Nigeria is today. And that's why Nigeria is calling on you and we hope you obey. Uh, a lot of uh, things have been said, a lot of questions have been asked me regarding what we intend to do for Nigeria. And in all fairness, among all the presidential candidates, or even the political candidates that we have today in Nigeria, I have uh, organized so many town hall meetings, had interactions, I've been in the north, I've been in the south, I've been in the east, I've been in the west, I've been in the middle of Nigeria. I've been in Nigeria at night, during the daytime. I have been to places where you cannot travel by car. I've been on the motorbikes, as known as Okada. Where Okada could not go to, I've been on boats in Nigeria. I have been to Nigeria to understand what Nigeria has been going through. I've met the real people of Nigeria in the last eight months. I've spoken to them. I've had conversations with people you can never imagine who talk to leaders, people like Fulani Hetzman, who one of them I met on my return from Taraba State, Jalingo, when I went there, and spoke to this man. And he said to me, nobody among the political class ever asked them what they wanted before. They just assumed that you know these are Fulani Hetzman, they are carrying weapons and they are selling cows, and they are rapists. Nobody talks to them. And we met fishermen on our way uh, from the Niger Delta region of Nigeria. We've been to markets. A few days ago, yes, we went to internally displaced uh, camps, and then we visited three of them. The same thing, the leaders are not talking to them. I went to the one in Bakasi, Bakasi was uh, seated to come around, I think, about 10 years ago. The people who were displaced from Bakasi have not been uh, relocated back to where they are supposed to be. Even though billions of dollars have been raised on an annual basis, billions of dollars were set aside for them, the monies were invested. I met IDPs in Yola, Noah State, I met IDPs in Tarava State, I met IDPs in Bengay states. I have been to places like Zamfara states. Uh, we went to Kirby. We went to a place called Agrobu. Anybody here by Agrobu where they used to do the fishing festival. All oh, so many of these places are part of what I refer to as the government territory of Nigeria. There's zero governance in Nigeria today. 
and we can solve the problem. These problems are not big problems. Contrary to what you have been told, that Nigerian problems are insurmountable. And contrary to the assertion that only God can solve Nigeria's problem, it's not true. God solved Nigeria problem, Nigeria's problem a long time ago. But the problem with our people in Nigeria is that even after our prayers have been answered, we remain on our knees asking for more without going out there to, you know, to carry out the answer part of our prayers. I'm not trying to sound religious, but I'm just telling you that we have tested every part of Nigeria and come to the conclusion that things are not as difficult as they have made you believe or made you to believe or want you to perpetually believe. In fact, Nigeria is going to be a place that can be governed very easily if only we can do some simple basic things in the country. The reason is simple. The people of Nigeria have come to a conclusion that governments don't exist. So if any governments come around at all to do anything for Nigerians, they will start appreciating that government. That is why the governors of Lagos are very popular. Even though people who govern the state of Lagos cannot succeed as county executives here, in Nigeria, they seem to be very good because they know how to do very nominal, flashy, you know, glittery things. And little they do impress people so much that they keep calling anybody that comes to Lagos as action government. That's the truth. It is certain. If we were to repeat itself in Nigeria today, a Nigerian president that can do a few things will become so popular in the world, everybody will be singing their praises, even when they haven't done half of what presidents do in other parts of the world. This is my spirit. And in coming here tonight, uh, I am not trying to come here to repeat to you so many of the things you already know about Nigeria. But one thing I know as much as so many people sitting down here is that if you have a chance, you will love a country that you can go back to. Yes. One thing I know for sure that a lot of us, so many of us who have even abandoned our citizenship of Nigeria, if we have a chance, we would love to embrace our country once again. We would love to go there and retire. We would love to even to take our kids back there to go to school and learn now languages and you know know about our culture. We would love to live behind this very cold, wintry, deadly Chicago weather every winter. <laughs> yeah, I'm serious. Yes, take you back and go back to a country that's blessed with nice weather. I'm telling you, it's unbelievable how nice, you know, the, the, the only time you can appreciate Nigeria very well is to come to, to come from Nigeria at this time to Chicago. Don't stop anywhere else. Or go to Minnesota. Or go to New York where it's really cold. And then you go to Nigeria where it's really, really nice and warm. Yes, but we don't have nice leaders and our society is in shambles. Our country is broken and the Nigerian state officially has failed. So what's the solution? The solution lies with every one of us sitting down here today. There are a lot of ways we can intervene. There are a lot of ways we can solve the problem. Uh, yes, it's true that if you give us money, we will be able to campaign successfully in Nigeria and defeat the old brigade or the old cargoes, as we call them. But money is not going to solve the problem by itself. We need people to get physically involved. The same way most of you got involved with the Obama campaign, right here in Chicago as well. Right. The same way you got involved, you get involved with your local politics here. You can call people at home. You can enlighten people at home. You can get involved in social media campaigns that we're doing, and be part of history, as the book I mentioned. Tonight, 
as we are here tonight in Chicago, the campaign, the, 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 the ban campaign for 2019 has just been lifted in Nigeria. Today is November 18th in Nigeria. They just lifted the ban campaign. I'm supposed to be in Nigeria tonight. But I'm waiting for the rest or the rest of two other candidates to also start because this is going to be a marathon and I know that they will get tired very soon. So I'll let them go ahead, very far ahead before I start my own campaign and I guarantee that I'll catch up with them and beat them to it. Thank you, Thank you. We need to uh, print memorable there. You know, we have t-shirts, 
cars, uh, people have been donating their own vehicles and houses to us around Nigeria to brands uh, and use our secretariat. We need posters, we need flyers, we need stickers all over Nigeria. And that is our challenge and that is why this gathering was uh, called tonight by organizers in Chicago. This is not the first place that this has happened. Recently, we went to Australia. I mean, if you are running for the presidency of Nigeria, you have to go to Australia. Then you are serious. Because that's a three day journey just to go from Nigeria to Australia. I left on a Monday, I didn't arrive in Australia until Wednesday morning. Yes. Well, good news is that within four cities in Australia, we were able to raise almost 30 million Australian dollars. I'm sorry, 30,000 Australian If I did 30 million, I won't be in front of you. <laughs> <laughs> 30,000. And, you know, they, after we left, they kept donating and they are going to use their donations to print uh, posters from China that they will ship to Nigeria on our behalf. So there's, you can do a lot of things for us. And you can adopt a village and fund people there to campaign. You can adopt a ward, you can adopt a polling unit for the election, you can adopt a state as our people are doing in the new states and other states across the federation where they are funding directly without even contacting us, providing posters. The only thing they ask us is for us to provide a soft copy of the posters, we send it to them, they print it in mass, and people are pasting the posters all over the place. You know, I have to announce that the people of uh, Nigeria and Wisconsin, just across from here, sent to us $2,300 tonight. They brought it all the way from Wisconsin. You have to give them a round of applause. They are doing that to challenge Chicago. Yes. And I'm sure that you'll prove them wrong tonight That's right. uh, by saying that. Maybe one person just make that donation so that the Wisconsin people can go to press. Yeah. So, uh, that's why we're here. And I've been asked to see if you guys have questions as well. But if you ask me questions tonight, uh, I'll be answering the same questions I've asked about 5,000 times. Yeah. Since we started this, with over 150 events. And so many events have happened in Nigeria that we've been to 30 states, uh, we've been to towns, cities, villages, we've been to universities. Uh, about a week ago, we were at the Obatemi Awolowo University in Leife. Is anybody from Great Ife here? Ife, OAU, Great Ife. Fantastic university. Over 3,000 students attended. In fact, the hall was filled to the brim when we finished. The students are all waiting for a leadership that they can be proud of. You know. So this is not also only about Nigeria, it's about the continent of Africa. Because everybody is looking up to Nigeria to get it right. And as soon as we get it right, uh, our continent will also shine on the, on the mountain. That is why Nigeria used to be referred to as the giant of the sun. And our party logo, it's two hands this way that is you know uh, facing sunshine and those two hands for those who may not have known what it is represent the unity of joining of hands of nigerians at home and nigerians abroad if you ask some people at home they describe those two hands as saying waka to oppress us we didn't design it like that but well, that's how people are interpreting it. And they are entitled to interpret it the way they like. Because our party is a party of resistance against oppression. So, uh, without taking too much of your time, I know the organizers are itching to start the fundraiser tonight. But let me also inform you all that I'm not, you are not the only person here tonight. We have the benefit of Nigerians all over the world watching us through Facebook Live, that's that little device standing in front of us. 
as a Facebook Live uh, broadcast equipment. And I'm sure nothing less than 200 to 300 people are watching. By the time this conversation is over, or will be over, we will have some 10,000 Nigerians watching. So, whichever way you want to conduct yourself tonight, just know that you are being watched. <laughs> yes. And those Nigerians that are watching are very opinionated, you know, they, they, are, they, they have opinions and they, you know, they have to chill. So, you better donate very well because they get upset when you bring me all the way from Nigeria to fundraiser and nothing comes well out of it. It's not a threat, it's a joke, right? <laughs> uh, so, uh, let me thank you once again, Chicago, for bringing us all the way to Chicago. Uh, let me use your body to thank the people of Minnesota. We were in Minnesota yesterday. And by tomorrow, we'll be heading to Columbus, uh, Ohio, where Nigerians there have also invited us over. And after that, we arrive in Nigeria on Thursday for the commencement of our own campaign that is going to start proper non-stop. After that, I've been told that we're heading to camp. We are taking the battle to uh, their front door. Yes. Taking back. So thank you so much. As you can imagine, uh, tonight I'm very, very mellow. Reason is that I've been told that they have from the year they have. <laughs> I'm conserving my energy not to talk but to eat tonight. And of course to dance. Thank you very much, everyone. Have a fantastic evening. AAC. Take it back. Take it back.
Ladies and gentlemen, I have with me this beautiful sister. Can you introduce yourself? And together tonight, we need your support. Our president to be just spoke to us, and we know all these things that need to be done are not done just by ourselves. Let me tell you something very unique about this party. He said earlier, Mr. Shore said earlier, he said the symbol, the logo of the party is two hands. Right? It means he cannot do it by himself. I cannot build Nigeria myself. We have to put our hands together. And you know what's something that stood out about this party? Because other parties need, you still need a hand to be able to, to be able to use the other logos. I'll give you an example. PDP, you need your hands to hold your umbrella. Is it not? AC, I mean, they use proof, right? What do you need to hold the proof? So with our hands, with our cooperation, we're going to do this together. Ladies and gentlemen, you've heard. They said many other states have pledged and they've done so marvelous. Chicago people, please, let's do this. All right, so I'm going to hand the microphone to my sister, PC, to keep up stand. Please, everybody has to make a donation tonight. Our target tonight is to at least surpass other states. If we can't be the best overall, at least let's be among the top three. And I'm going to talk to you about top three. We want something not less than $10,000. With you, with me, we can do it. Take it back. Take it back. AAC. Do we have any volunteers who be willing to be the first to donate? Maybe we can start at five hundred, five hundred dollar donation. If you don't have it today, that's okay. If you have credit card, we take credit card as well. Cash, credit card, anything. Five hundred, two fifty. Ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, we have POS here. There is no excuse. We have there. Whatever it is, you want. Any, any Whatsoever you want to do, we have it here. Please give a round of applause for this. My daddy in the house. He's going to introduce himself and he's going to tell us how much he's going to pay towards this cost. You're welcome, sir. Spirit, spirit. 
Spirit, where are you? Um, ladies and gentlemen, I want my daddy to say it out himself. Okay, on behalf of me and my family, I can make one of If you are here with your checkbook, you can bring them out now so that we can, we can speed it up. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I'm Dr. Christian Akiwobo. And uh, the name deserves $1 million donation. You know something about Akiwobo. Is that the reason? Okay. I'm not sure what that does. Oh, really? Right? Move over. The great. Listen, I know, I know I'm talking about my uncle out of Superficial Awo University Department of Sociology. He is very familiar with him. What you are doing now, Amoyele, has been in the forefront for more than 30 years. I happen to be one of the people that have written extensively about what Nigeria means. And uh, I gave you a short summary. Please pay attention to it. Um, it's all about transparency. It's all about accountability. It's all about being on the side of the law rather than being I should feel Lucy. That is the lawmakers that also violate the laws, which is what we have in a lot of situations like this. As we're moving forward, I am donating two hundred and fifty dollars. And I'm not just donating that for competition's sake. I'm doing that because of what I believe in. For what Nigeria needs right now. Okay, thank you very much. The Lord is your strength. I'm an Andalus as well. I'm an Andalus as well. The Lord is your strength. Just stay on. Okay. The truth, the truth will set you free. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. A round of applause. Good evening to everybody. Um, all love Rhyme of Apache and I happen to be one of the organizers. But how much I'm giving in is going to be coming in later. But I'll have to donate on behalf of uh, Ola Dele Abu Ahmed Ola Rhyme $50.
And then on behalf of Ola Dimechi, Ade Bambo, Abdulafiz, Ola Brahima, another $50. And then on behalf of Ola Diabola, Ade Boye, Abdulaziz, Ola Brahima, he's also donating $50 as well. So $150. The students, and uh, they cannot afford to write a check, but here's the dollars. Thank you. A round of applause. Thank you very much, sir. Any other bidders? Yeah. Uh, I understand some people are very, very private person. Because me, in my head, I'm thinking of doing like 10,000 person. But I don't want to say it on Facebook. You know how our people are back home now. And then I'll just hear my WhatsApp box more. Green, green, green. Oh, mom, you want to join it now? Ah, oh, you know, you see, see, you could have no. Oh, ah, mom, I think you're not in the room. Oh, mom, they want to speak to you. Ladies and gentlemen, please, this table is another table that I have a lot of hope in. Yes. I have hope, I have faith, I have confidence. And if you see the man I'm standing with, you can tell. You know, there are some people, they don't shout. Those are their parents, you can tell. Our private people shout. Oh, wow. Well, please give me a round of applause. Give me a round of applause. It's what you want to do, but it doesn't want to like me. Good evening, everyone. Um, on behalf of myself and my family, I'll donate $100. Take it back! Take it back! Wow. I like people, people of timber and caliber. It brought the money out. That's action. Just like the name of our party. Ladies and gentlemen, please, I want us to have one orientation tonight. This thing we are doing here tonight, we are not doing it for this man. Okay? Please, let's have a demand on our mind. We are doing it for our dear country. Most of us travel back home. And we are even scared. We don't even care our parents are coming home. Imagine. Because there is no security. The last time I went home, I did not tell anybody. I now let that Uber finish. I was not thinking in my head. This is a good decision. What if Uber go and tie me and go and do my way with you? I didn't even tell anybody. Please, ladies and gentlemen, let's do this from our heart. We know this is a man of proving integrity. It's not a man of because he's here. We'll see. It's Reverend has spoken for him. If I have my adults, you don't want to adopt me. We have credit card readers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To be honest with myself, the family are even three of us.
Well, please give my brother a round of applause. He's one of those private person too. Private people. Hmm. If you check his Instagram now, it's on private. Everything private. Huh? There are some tables. Some tables are intimidating me. Because the kind of money I've got to a year. Well, let me just go to this my daddy. How are you doing this? No, wait now. Daddy, daddy, do you know what I like about you? Huh? Oh, okay. Please hold on, I'll come back to you. Um, you can go ahead and ask a quick question before you leave. Sorry, sorry. I'm sorry I have to leave now, but I just want to ask a question. Um, um, I want you to know that I'm a pastor and we pray for you. Amen. And I love what you're doing and I'm really encouraged. Um, but you said something so uh, about the minimum, what do you call it, the living wage. The living wage. I know the way it operates here. I know it's easier for a company to pay you the minimum wage. I don't know how you plan to achieve that in regards to private sector. Like for example, if I have a company in Nigeria and if you say the living wage is hundred thousand and if I don't make that kind of income, how do I sustain myself? So that's the question. Then two, this one is an advice. Uh, I'm just advising. Um, I want to encourage you, even though you have some things you want to do concerning um, our politicians, I just feel you should keep it private because um, these people, I know you have some, I know you have integrity, but you see these people, I don't want you to fight unnecessary battles, you know, by saying you're going to do this to these people. I don't want you to fight it. Because these people can go out of their way to do anything because of power. So I just feel you should keep it to yourself. When that time comes, you can do whatever you want. Thank you very much. Keep response. We have to. Yeah, the minimum wage thing is uh, we are not forcing private individuals to implement them. It is federal workers. Federal workers are the target of the living wage that we're imposing. And then states are supposed to follow that. But as for the private sector, uh, a lot of people in the private sector are actually already paying more than the minimum wage that we are proposing. So it's not going to be a major problem for the private sector. But it's the law or whatever proposal we have will not force anybody in the private sector to pay the minimum wage in the country. Definitely that's not the starting point. Over time, uh, as our economy improves, uh, you can imagine that you see to it that uh, people are paid a living wage. Thank you. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you very much, sir. I like you. I'm 
many sons do you have? No. Can you adopt me, please? I'm adopted. And the reason is because I know that money is huge. Because I can see fresh people coming by my eyes. I have the right pro eyes.
I'll talk to you privately at the end of the day, and I will see what I can do in regards to the I've been waiting for this moment to happen, and I'm so glad that we see somebody that we can do up to to move us forward. Nigeria has been in disarray for a long time, and we thank God for bringing you up to the to the cast. And we are going to be backing you both for prayer, for kindness, and then with every resources that we all have, we will back you. I'm the president of one of the Nigeria Women Association in the state of India. And uh, we are having a meeting tomorrow. I'm going to encourage them as well. And we are going to pray to our people at home and see what we can do to make it better. I'm even coming home this year. And I will see how far I can go, even with our own people at home, to see what we can do differently. I have a brother at home that has contested. He was a senator before who will know me. And that is Alain Chicago. He wants me to resign in my house when he comes here. So we will see what how we can back you up and make a change to our nation. Our nation is up. We, we are all hoping to come back home. We've been around here for a long time. It's about time. We want to be able to bring our children home and to be safe. Anytime I bring my children back home, they will all say, Mom, is this where you grow up? We are here now, the light is on. And I always tell them, when you get to your father's house, there will be light. That is unfortunate. Very, very unfortunate. I was back at home in 2015 for my brother's wedding, and I have to buy, I bought a Wi Fi to be able to do all my assignment because I was doing my doctorate at that time. Why do we have to worry? This is a nation we all grew up, and it was wonderful when we were back there. I remember I went to school without paying a dime. You know, here, when you go to college, you are in debt. So where are we? Where are we going to? So I'm going to talk to you in person and I will see you what, 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 I, what I can do with you. Thank you for coming and we have to all your comments on this situation. Yeah. Thank you. AC! AC! Ladies and gentlemen, let me remind you something. Even though some of us are here in Western world, in America, don't forget, for the most part, we are the ones that feed majority of people in Nigeria. Where are they testifying the house? Yes. I personally, I know how much I say to my parents every month. It is our responsibility. If we can't go and get a peace, if we can't go, let's talk to them. They will listen to us. I want to go them on. Pardon my I'm sorry, I'm not supposed to say that. We are kind of like their major support. Please. I remember one last time I went with one of my nephews to Nigeria and the guy was playing PlayStation. All of a sudden he sees the light. He said, Uncle Sam, I'm blind. <laughs> the guy experienced that before. Ladies and gentlemen, let's move it so fast now. Simplicity. This place is too cold now. One month of the little bit. Sir. I'm to you, sir.
pastor. Let it eat. Shabu, shabu. Me, I like it fast. Tell me, I'm going to like it fast. You like it fast? So, pass me. You like it fast?
Thank you very much, sir. Ah, sister. Hey, 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 hey. Please, who knows how to dance shaku shaku? What about zaku? There's one dance now that is out. People will just pour down. You know you can you dance together, baby. Yeah? <laughs> you reject it. She rejected it in the name of Jesus. Ah, mommy, why did I speak to you? <laughs>
adjourn. Now, my question is, I've been hearing the PVC, and uh, for those of us who are in the diaspora, uh, how do we register to vote here in the United States? That's uh, our vote can be counted. We don't want anyone to pick our president. We don't even want Donald Trump to pick our president because he cannot pick our president. So we'll pick our own person. Thank you, sir. Go ahead. Go ahead, go ahead. I wanted to listen. Hi, Mr. Shore. Um, actually, I actually have two questions for you. The first one is, has to be, um, why were you late today? I'm just curious because the event is just I said, why were you late today? Because the event was scheduled from 5 to 10, and I was here from before. And my question around lateness has to do, it's a small thing, but it makes it a big impact as a leader, because you can be in multiple places where you can set a tone as a leader. That's my first question. And my second piece has to do, what are your next plans in, in the situation where you actually don't win the election? Because to be realistic, somebody's going to win, somebody's going to lose. But how else can you impact Nigeria going forward if you're not chosen as a candidate president? Thank <laughs> you. 
money that was sent from. So you have a right to vote, and we make sure you have that right to vote. That's not the time to vote. Thank you, bro. Why was I late tonight? It is because you have organizers here who determine when the guests should show up. So I'm a guest to the organizers of this event, and the organizers decide when I show up. But my preference is to show up on time. But well, you know what? I didn't bring my car to Chicago. And I was not allowed to call Uber because they didn't tell me the value of the events until this morning. So it is part of the logistic of organizing. Organizers say, look, we want enough people to be on the ground because it's a fundraiser before you come in. If I come in first, that means I have to donate all the money to myself. So it's a strategy that the organizers adopted. But regardless, I apologize that I came in late, later than I should. I've been known for fighting people who come late to the If we lose, it is because we choose to lose the election. It is not because we should have lost the election. We are up against two archaic people. We are up against two obsolete you know, human beings or parties. We are up against people with analog brains. We are in the digital era. If we cannot defeat them, then shame on all of us. If we cannot defeat our poverty, we cannot defeat the misgovernance that's going on in Nigeria. We can't defeat the misery that they have brought upon us. We can't defeat their wickedness. We can't defeat a minority when we're in the majority pushing for a revolutionary direction for Nigeria. I'm not afraid to say it will be a shame on all of us. And in that regard, we have lost the election. I'm very sure. Somebody has said that events are going to get to the point where we should come to the shop. And I can already see that something is about to give in Nigeria. Some say more. Some win. Some win. And I will tell you, thank you. The first victory for us is the fact that we are confronting these people at all. In the manner and where we are confronting them, that is already leaving them dusted before the election is even started. Can I tell you something? And I don't intend to drag this on. Already, all the candidates, especially the two major candidates, are mortally afraid to have a debate with us. Mortally afraid. Buhari has already built out of the debate and he said he will send Oshiba to represent him. And we are saying there must be a debate. And we are not debating the vice president. The vice president will debate our vice president, the vice presidential candidate. Good news is that we have a very sound vice presidential candidate as well. You know, I can't wait to debate Buhari. An article. And I know that after the debate, the election will be over. That's what, that's, that's, that one is certain. Uh, so, how do you change Nigeria from a consuming nation, that's what I get, to a productive nation? Uh, truth is that when you, don't pro when you don't produce anything, you consume anything. It's just like when they say you don't stand up for something, you fall for anything. That is what is killing Nigeria. Well, how can Nigeria produce without electricity? Those are the questions. We cannot 
put the cart before the horse, we have to address a few things. And one of it is fundamentally how we get power. Because if we get it right with electricity, we get it right with security and safety of our people, Nigeria will get back to producing. There are companies that are out there, owned by Nigerians, that are innovations owned by Nigerians. There are Nigerians that are producing all kinds of software out there. But they are not taking it on because those things cannot work with what they call a better pass by neighbor, generators. But most importantly, before you can produce, you have to take darkness out of Nigeria. Yes. Before you can produce, you have to produce power, first and foremost. Nigeria has to be safe, secure for everybody. There is enough people to provide the labor. There are enough people who have brains in Nigeria and outside of Nigeria who are willing to come back home. There are enough investors from outside of Nigeria who will gladly go back to Nigeria and invest. In fact, our African-American brothers and sisters are already showing that they can invest in manufacturing in places like Ghana. But Nigeria, nobody wants to go to Nigeria. We will start producing the moment we get those very core sectors right. And I can tell you that Nigeria can produce pretty much everything and anything. If they have the right kind of atmosphere to do it, but most importantly, the right leaders to do it. Our brother was talking about language. I completely agree with you. I do not subscribe to the idea of people telling me that my English is not good. Because I've never met an English man who can speak Yoruba like me, even though my Yoruba is not very good as well. A -A -C. We have to go back to that. We have to go back to using our mother tongue to teach our kids. You know, one of the things that I regretted most when I was in Nigeria growing up as a kid is going to any of my uncles who banned the speaking of Yoruba at their houses at their homes. In fact, when we were in uh, secondary school, they used to write it in front of the class. But that class speaking is totally prohibited. Right? This is the kind of injustice that we did to our psyche as our people. Like our brother said, the moment you lose your language, you have lost your culture. And the moment you lose your culture, you have lost your humanity. The moment you lose your humanity, you lose your dignity. This is to be addressed to the new leadership that will correct our curriculum of education as well. Thank you very much, everyone. Before the election, if we do, we'll come back. If we don't, we will invite you to the inauguration next year. They said there's going to be a school inauguration dance. Yes. Uh, the sad thing is that I don't know how to dance, but I love to dance. <laughs> so I'll try my best. Nobody should laugh at me because. I dance in my own fashion of what I watch at the shop. Ladies and gentlemen, it's my privilege to teach the next president Shaku Shaku tonight. However, before we get to that level, please, there are lots of drinks over there. Even if we have alcohol, please, if you are driving, don't drink. Don't drink our bread. If you must drink, just drink table water. Just we are drinking. And there are a lot of food left um, over there as well. If you have not eaten, please make sure you can even take it away. You know, in Kaiser, on that. Oh, yeah, there you go. You might not love that. You go. What do you shoot for anyone? Mr. Simplicity, are you ready? Ladies and gentlemen, please, I want everybody to be on our feet. Please, let's stand up. Let's stand up. Let's stand up. Anybody be on your feet and face me. Anybody want to do an exercise? Anybody be on your feet? Step forward, step forward. Step forward, please come towards me. Everybody, come towards me. Please, come towards me. Yes, yes, take that step. Come closer, come closer. Come closer, yes, come closer. Everybody, come closer, come closer. I'm waiting. Mr. Sapos, are you ready? Yes, sir. Let's go, Yes, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, 
This is a 